Now, a word on, um, on Buddhist philosophy, basic Buddhist philosophy. This is the, best, the message I've just shared with you. But now what's the philosophical uh, foundations for this, for this movement called Buddhism? The first um, observation, by the way, the term arahat, of course, means one who is enlightened. That day in the, in the, in the, in the deer park, he became enlightened. From then on, he is an enlightened person, an arahat. And that's the goal of Buddhism, to become an arahat. Now, why do you want to become an arahat? Why do you want to become enlightened? It is so that you can get off the cycle of birth and rebirth. Now, did you notice I used a change of phrase here? When I talked about Hinduism, I consistently said reincarnation. And now I'm saying rebirth. Huh. Why? Why that change? Because in Hinduism, they say the soul is your Atman within you. And upon death, your soul leaves the body it goes on a cycle, and then it is reincarnated in another body. So reincarnation is the word we use. A soul is reborn within another body, but not Buddhism. Within Buddhism, it is the total person who is reborn, not reincarnated, but reborn. The total person is reborn. In this sense, Buddhism is more close to Christianity as it views life after death than is true of, uh, of, of Hinduism. It's not the same. I don't mean it's the same at all. But it is a bit closer. In this, within Buddhism, it is the total person who is reborn. That is not true within, uh, within Hinduism. It's only the Atman, only the soul that is reborn. And within Hinduism, that soul is reborn into a body that is a good fit for the soul. And what has determined the good fit? It's your karma. It's the deeds that you do that determines the shape and size of your soul. And so perhaps within Hinduism, uh, you have done something awful. And so when you're reborn, you are to be reborn as a jackal. Within, within Hinduism, you might be reborn as a jackal if your deeds have been very, very bad. Why would that happen? It's because the deeds have shaped your soul into the kind of size and shape that fits a jackal. See, that's the idea. So your soul gets reincarnated in the form of a jackal. But now in Buddhism, there's not that sort of idea. Within Buddhism, it's the total person who is reborn. So they use the term reborn, not reincarnation. Now, so as I say, it's the total person who is, uh, who is, who is reborn. And why is he reborn? Because of wrong, a wrong tana. So the idea is that you go round and round on this cycle of birth and rebirth within Buddhism, just like in Hinduism, except in Hinduism, it's the whole soul. Here is the body going round and round. And so the goal in Buddhism, just as in Hinduism, is to get off that cycle of going round and round. That's the idea, to get off that cycle. And how do you do that? Through arahat, through becoming enlightened. And when you practice these principles that we've been talking about properly, then the possibility is there that when you die, you won't be reborn again and you'll be absorbed into the universal. Now, when you're absorbed into the universal, that doesn't mean going to a heaven where we can talk with each other and know each other. No, to being absorbed in the universal is to be absorbed into the universal ocean of life. Uh, Buddhists liken it to a drop of water, uh, and the ocean waves are hitting the rocks, and this drop of water goes flying into the sky above the waves, but it remains a drop, and it comes back into the waves and stays that way, and at the next wave, it will go out again into the atmosphere. And so it goes round and round, this little drop of water, round and round, and round and round, caught there in the waves. Why does it keep going round and round? Why? What's going on? Ah, it's wrong Tana. That's why. It's what's wrong Tana? Ah, wrong desire is the desire to continue to exist. But here's David Shank, and he hopes so much that at death he will continue to exist. 
that he won't go into oblivion. And that desire keeps me locked on this cycle of going round and round and round and round. I can't get off of it. I can't get off of it until, until I can get off of it when I have, when I have right tana, right desire. And when I have right tana, it's as if a spring is released and my soul is released from that entrapment, from that trap of going round and round. And when it's released, what happens? It is absorbed into the universal wave. It is no more an individual soul and no more an individual person is now absorbed into the universal. That's, that's the whole Buddhist philosophy, the whole Buddhist quest, mm -hmm. to, desire, to get right tana, to get right tana. It's what they're working for, right desire. Yep. <clears throat> So how do we get off of this cycle? Well, there are three basic refuges, three basic refuges that we must participate in in order to get off the cycle of birth and rebirth. What are those three refuges? What are the three refuges? I take refuge in the Buddha. Buddha is not a god who will save you. No. In fact, when you see the Buddha figures sitting, they often are sitting like this, often like this. What does this mean if I come to you like this? I'm not going to help you. What if, does it mean if I come to you like this? It also, mean, it also means I will not help you. You see, you are your own savior in Buddhism. Buddha is not your savior. You are your savior. You are. I take refuge in the Buddha then does not mean that you go to Buddha to be saved. No, no, no. You go to Buddha for instruction. He is the pathfinder who has found the way. Several years ago, I was in. A, I go a couple times. Have gone to Buddhist sanghas, monasteries. And several years ago, I was in a sangha. And they said they're going to pray for us. And so these monks prayed. After the prayer, I asked them, "Who did you pray to to ask to bless us? Who who was your prayers addressed to?" And this is what they said: "We did not pray to God. There is no God to help you." What we did was to pray that you will bless yourself. <laughs> not that God will bless you. Not that we monks will bless you. No, we pray that you will bless yourself, you see. So when the first refuge is called, is called, I take refuge in the Buddha, it does not mean that Buddha is going to save you. No, like I said, it means rather that you will save yourself. But Buddha shows the way for you to save yourself. Secondly, the second path is I take refuge in the Sangha. Now, what is the Sangha? The Sangha is the Buddhist monastery. Why do you need a Sangha, a monastery? It's because when you are living in society as a whole, you cannot practice the right eight points here that everyone must practice in order to become arahat. So in all Buddhist lands, Buddhism cannot function unless it has monasteries, places where people can go and meditate properly, exercising these spiritual and mental disciplines. So that's the second refuge. First of all, I take refuge in the Buddha. Secondly, I take refuge um, in the Sangha. Third, third, I take refuge in the Dharma. I take refuge in the Dharma. What's the Dharma? The Dharma is the total way of life of the Buddhist practitioner, the way. 
While we continue being a benevolent project, your kind donations will continue to be vital in fulfilling the calling of TVS Ministry. We do count on your gracious support and cooperation. For detailed information, please visit tvsseminary.com. These three dimensions are necessary in order to acquire Arahat. I take refuge in the Buddha. He is the pathfinder showing me the way to think and act. I take refuge in the Sangha. That's the monastery where you will want to spend some time, surely, in your lifetime. Maybe just six months, maybe six years, maybe a lifetime. It depends how serious you are about becoming an Arahat. But um, women can be, can be nuns if they want to. It's mostly a man's world. But it uh, can be women as well uh, that uh, partic part participate in the, in the Sangha. And then I take refuge in the Dharma, which is the right karma of the middle way. Not going to one excess, another extreme, going the middle way. That's, that's the Dharma. Those three basic principles, which are called the, um, the basic Buddhist philosophy the basic three refuges. I take refuge in those three, in those three refuges. Now these three refuges help a person to acquire enlightenment. And the enlightenment releases the person now from the cycles of rebirth. And when you become released from these cycles of rebirth, because you now have right tana, having practiced these three refuges, when you become released, then you are released into nirvana which means nothingness. Like the drop in an ocean wave, you're released so you're not keep, keep being born and reborn again and again, and you're released into the ocean wave, become absorbed with it, absorbed with the universal, so your individuality is now gone forever. You're absorbed into the universal like a drop of water in a bucket of water, um, and that's nirvana. Uh, 